I'm Mike Brady, your state senator, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Brady Works. We discuss different things going on in the Commonwealth, and we want to hear from you, the residents of the Second Plymouth in Bristol District. As I mentioned in the past, the district is going to be changing next year because they're going to be including the town of Avon and some precincts in the southern end of Randolph. So the new district next year will be called the Second Plymouth in Norfolk District. But I'm, my name is Mike Brady, and I'm your state senator. I'm just glad to be here. We have, have a few guests from the VFW Post 1046 in Brockton. We're going to be getting to that because we are taping this on the Friday before Memorial Day. So we want to emphasize on what's going on for Memorial Day and some of the legislation we passed and what we have to do moving forward to support our veterans. But I just want to let you know that we did uh, finalize the budget in the Senate this past week. We were able to get more revenue ever in the history of the Commonwealth to our local cities and towns and municipalities, which is huge. But as we all know, we're also going through some difficult times. Interest rates are starting to increase. As we know, gas prices are through the roof. So we got to prepare for the future as well. Though the revenue in the Commonwealth through the help of the APRA funds and federal dollars have been great, the American Rescue Plan, and in, in through fiscal responsibility at the state level, but we are concerned moving forward for next year. So as though we got more money to the cities and towns that we represent, we also were able to put more money in our savings account, the so-called rainy day account. And that is prepared just like you at home have to prepare for your savings in case of tough times. And I know everybody's suffering there with the cost of food and fuel going through the roof. We have to prepare for those down times. And we are expecting some down times next year in the state budget. But fortunately this year we got more money in the budget and uh, we were able to deliver more money to schools, Chapter 70 money. We passed the Student Opportunity Act uh, that will bring more revenue to the public schools in the Commonwealth. We put more money into higher education, which is great. And most importantly, as, as well as everything else, is early education. And we fortunately have voted and had full day kindergarten in Brock, but not every community has that. And early childhood learning is so important. So a couple of things I just want to highlight in the budget. Uh, we were able to get more money for Mass Health, helping over $2 million of the Commonwealth's children, seniors, and low-income residents, which is so important. We also helped put more funding in for substance abuse. And during the COVID, a lot of people were meeting with their agents virtually. It doesn't work virtually. You need to meet in person. And now that things have started to open up because the substance abuse uh, crisis is still going. We see more homeless people out there. We see people with families that come from very well-to-do families that affected everybody, you know, with the opioid addiction crisis, and we are putting more funding to that, and more funding into mental health to people that may not have ever tried a drug, but through circumstances that happen in their life, more money to help those residents. In early intervention services to assure support for availability for infants and young toddlers for developmental dis delays and disabilities, which is so important. Mm -hmm. We put also more money into local aid. So this is unrestricted local aid that goes to the cities and towns because, you know, Brockton does get more funding than the cities and other towns around us, I should say. But we have the most services that we provide for all of those residents. So we do need the more funding. But the towns around us, they need funding as well. And we did get more money into local aid. So that is left up to local communities how they want to spend that money. And um, Board of Health, they've been doing a tough job with this pandemic. We're still not out of the woods, I, I, at least that we're able to meet in person today, but we still have to be vigilant. There are still people that haven't got their vaccines. We encourage everybody to get their vaccines. I was able to get both the Pfizer vaccine and, and the booster shot as well. But it was a tough road, especially the past couple of years. I know some of our veterans, like at the Knights of Columbus and Whitman, they had vaccines there. Then the, then the administration shifted the vaccines to Foxborough. And, I have a tough time going to Foxborough when there's not even a Patriots game going on. Mm -hmm. Never mind somebody who's elderly who unfortunately take their car to the market once a week and that's all they do. They have right. a tough time. So we, we work to try to get more vaccines and through our local Brockton Emergency Management Association, they've been doing a yeoman's work, working with our local health departments, our hospitals, and the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center with Sue Joss to make sure there's plenty of supplies of masks and vaccines, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's so important. In the supplemental budget, we, we got more money for state police and pandemic-related costs and more money for our public safety personnel. Our first responders are out there day in and day out to help save lives every day, and we got more money in the budget for that. So that's just a few of the highlights. I just also want to mention about 
local initiatives, uh, local earmarks. We, we were able to get, I was able to get in the Senate budget uh, some money for the Cape Verde Association Elder Program to help a lot of our elderly people. Hanson Fire Department for cardiac screening. The Central Plymouth Water District, and that's where we get our water from Silver Lake and the Mon Ponce and Ponds mm -hmm. as a backup. So we want to make sure that water is clean. And in a lot of towns around us who have wells, their water is so bad. I know that the town of Randolph is trying to come up with another plan, and Avon has their wells, and some of the other towns. So we're very fortunate that we have Silver Lake, which was one of the most pristine water resources in the Commonwealth, if not the country. But when the water shortages went down in the 60s and 70s, we had to dip in a furnace brook and stump brook, and we passed legislation locally to do desalinization. That's back when I was on the city council mm -hmm. as a backup, because back in the, even the 90s, you couldn't even water your lawn, never mind that, get mm -hmm. new business mm -hmm. development or new growth coming in, and that's helped out tremendously. But we've got to keep the cost down. The champion plan, I was able to get $100,000, and again, as I mentioned about the addiction crisis, that helps so many families out to get help with addiction situations, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. again, too many young people through this uh, opioid pandemic has, in, and it still happened during, during the COVID pandemic, that people still were out in the streets homeless because of addiction and everything else, so we're able to get mm -hmm. money for that. And Choice for Teens, which will help out children out there, and then some other money for the um, veterans and so forth and fire chiefs associations, and also um, durable medical equipment. This is a statewide initiative. We got $500,000 I was able to get in the budget for that, and that's mm -hmm. so important. So I'm gonna um, turn it over right now because Memorial Day is coming up and I just wanna clarify the difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Memorial Day, which was formerly known as Decoration Day, a recognition of laying wreaths and flowers around graves, is a time of remembrance to honor those who gave their lives in service to our country. While Veterans Day is a meaningful occasion as well, it honors all who have served in our armed forces during wartime and peacetime. And you know, we have to honor all our military personnel. They gave our lives for our country that we can have a free and open meeting like we're having today. And we're so grateful to all the veterans. So I'm gonna hand it over to my friends, Gail and Dan, and they're gonna tell you about what they do at the VFW. And then we're gonna go on to a couple of things we were able to get into legislation to help our veterans. So, Gail. Hi, hi, I'm Gail Kubek, president of VFW Post 1046 Auxiliary. And we have uh, uh, application uh, we, membership wheel here for eligibility. People that are eligible are the veterans in the middle, and it's family members around the circle. If you're eligible, we'll just show that up to the camera. There are so applications see, yeah. at at the post, and um, we have a Facebook page with a lot of information. It's VFW Post 1046 Auxiliary. We try to put as much information on there. This week we flagged graves at the veterans' graves at Melrose Cemetery. They gave us 900 flags and we were short by four because we gave six to the veterans from the VA hospital that came to, <laughs> to help out. And so I have those to run up there and, and put those on. But So there's 900 graves just in the World War I and the veterans circle, that's not counting all the others around the cemetery. I believe there's like 1,200 veterans' graves at Melrose Cemetery. It's a, it's a great blessing we have here, Senator, in, in, mm -hmm. in Brockton. It, you know, VFW auxiliaries all over the country get to serve veterans in their local community. We have the uh, added honor here that we have uh, veteran cemeteries in town that we also get to support. Mm -hmm. We have the VA hospital here that we also get to support. So uh, the other day when we were, we were putting these flags out at the veteran cemetery, uh, I got to know a veteran, uh, Kevin, who wasn't mm -hmm. part of our community originally, but because of the services that we have here at the VA hospital, it is something that uh, we in the auxiliary here get to get to support and get to, to know and help these people uh, who you know, nearly gave everything for our country, right. um, as you said, so that we can have so much. And it's it's very humbling uh, because all of us in the auxiliary were part of this wheel where we had a, a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, or a child who uh, served uh, in the United States Armed Forces. Um, and then we can help them. Uh, you know, if our grandparent or parent didn't come back from service, we're, we're helping their, their buddy uh, mm -hmm. who, who did come back, uh, who needs help adjusting into life, who need food, uh, mm -hmm. who need companionship, uh, who need health care. You know, there's times mm -hmm. we get calls that, and the majority of what we fundraise for is for uh, our veteran uh, a relief fund. Relief <laughs> Almost fund. remember yes. the name of it. <laughs> the relief fund, uh -huh. which is helping those veterans in need. Um, right. Which is why we do all the fundraising, which is why we do the body right. copy we sales. Check, we check with the VA hospital to see what types of things they need, and we donate gift cards and 
like food insecurity was a big thing, so we donated Walmart cards. They could use them for food or other items. What else did we donate? Um, oh, the the um, the ones that come in that I'm building four that are um, short term care, but they like to have donuts once in a while mm -hmm. instead of Twinkies. <laughs> so we donated Dunkin' Donuts cards. Um, you know, we do we do so much. I mean, there's a lot. There's always something going on, and then there's veterans in need that need something. You know, they're having a hard time with gas is a lie yes. and you know we do whatever we can to help out and this uh, raising heaven we went down Doyle sidelines parking lot and we did a fill a helmet we took these little kids helmets and glued them onto the thing and cut holes in the top and walked around and we collected like five hundred dollars in just a couple of hours mm -hmm. which is great because you know it, hel it helps so much what know? I like about the auxiliary for, for members that join you know regardless of of uh, your ability level, you know, obviously if your husband served, you could be 60, 70, 80 years old now. And that our fundraisers are something simple that everyone can participate mm -hmm. in, that we're just mm -hmm. going out and passing a helmet or selling candy bars mm -hmm. or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. We appreciate any mm -hmm. member we get. Uh, obviously the the auxiliary, a lot of people know it as the women's auxiliary. Right. Uh, right. I, I'm living proof now that it is uh, open for everybody. My right. grandmother was a member of the VFW auxiliary, uh -huh. uh, and she passed right. away before it became uh, uh, open to men as well. But because uh -huh. we have uh, wives, we have uh, mothers who have mm -hmm. served, uh, so it's it's great that it's now open for everybody. Well, I appreciate you mentioned the VA hospital. We, we're fortunate we have the VA hospital in Brockton uh -huh. on 123, but we had an issue there because you mentioned there's more women that have served in the military, mm -hmm. and they had a woman's locker. This was a couple of years ago. This would be right before COVID. We had Congressman Lynch come down because they shut down the building, but mm -hmm. they didn't tell anybody why they shut down the building. And it was before COVID, but everyone's panicking. Was there something that broke out there? What happened? Mm -hmm. And it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. And all it was was a simple ladies' shower that the shower head needed to be changed. They got a bleach and so forth. <laughs> and it had never been used because not more many women were using this facility. Uh -huh. In the pool where they were swimming was fine because mm -hmm. it was chlorine, so that kills just about everything. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the biggest thing we had, Congress and and I'm honored to serve on the mm -hmm. Veterans Service Committee mm -hmm. in the State House, besides being the Chairman thank of Public you for Service. That. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, um, so we were able to have a meeting and said just communicate with the people because the lack of information and that's why you know all of us have to do a better job because there's so many veterans out there that don't realize about the services and i'm glad that all the work you do at the vfw auxiliary 1046 and i'm glad that the uh, the city hall they just hired a new veteran service agent kelly young which i've known her she's served our country i just met kelly yeah very nice and i've known her family for years so that's great news mm -hmm. and somebody young and energetic we've had great people in the past i know bobby gill served there and, mm -hmm. and many others before mm -hmm. that and after many friends of ours and there's some that still have retired but have come back to help out. I know Brian mm -hmm. O'Leary, who I worked with at Massey Community College, he's, he served our country during the Vietnam era. He has gone back and he works part-time at the, VF, uh, the VA hospital up on Belmont Street. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he's mm -hmm. gone through health problems and uh, he was there in the, the worst of it and he, he's been a great friend and advocate, grew up in Brockton and uh, he's been helping out so many veterans at the VA, VA hospital, which I'm able to just make a call to him because there's always issues that come up and I know under past administrations in Brockton, before I got into the state house, we were able to get a veteran's home built on Spring Street that's more a self-sufficient building, not just a homeless shelter where mm -hmm. they clear them out in the day. This mm -hmm. is something that gives them independence and they have facilities and so forth to help them get back on the feet if they want to get a job out in the, in the you know. That, that's my thing. I don't feel like any veteran should be homeless. Exactly. Yeah. No, not after what they've done. For no, our and, and, and unfortunately, sometimes mm -hmm. we still mm -hmm. see it, and uh, right. there's many factors that happen. Right. You know, that's why we put more money into the budget for mental illness and right. to help veterans coming back. So it's not all just drug addicts or homeless. There's many other circumstances which cause right. a person to be homeless. Right. And, and the, the housing costs. We've got families that are living in cars right now that can't find an apartment. It's mm -hmm. unaffordable. And I know the city's trying to work to build more workforce development housing, mm -hmm. but um, and we've got a lot of state funding for that. but you know, there's still people suffering out there that, you know, with the cost of everything going up, can't even afford. And, you know, there is veterans benefits again, though, if mm -hmm. the people get lost through the system and don't know where to turn. Uh, right. So I'm, we try to direct them. Absolutely. I'm right. so grateful for mm -hmm. all your help. A mm -hmm. um, couple of things we did pass in the legislature. In the past, we did the Welcome Home Bill, the mm -hmm. Valor Act 1 and 2. But as you know, you can't live in your past laurels. So this past year, we supported, we passed this is by the Senate supporting military firms who re relocate to Massachusetts through the SPEED Act. And this legislation would speed up the professional licensure process 
for military spouse to ensure they can continue their careers and allow for advancement in virtual enrollment for military children as well to prevent disruptions in education, providing in-state tuition to help if they want to go to college and so forth, and military-connected mm -hmm. college students, and establish a Purple Star Camp designated to identify public schools that show a major commitment for mil military families. We also did a restructuring okay. the chain command at Holyoke and Chelsea, and that, during the pandemic, that was such a devastating oh, yes. uh, situation that happened, and, mm -hmm. you know, it should have never happened. There should have been better oversight. We can't, again, it's, mm -hmm. it's already done, mm -hmm. but moving forward, we provide a mm -hmm. lot of funding to build a new facility up there, not only up there, because not everyone from the South Shore can get up to the soldiers' home up in the North Shore, right. but to make sure there's a prevailing wage put in for the workers to make sure they get provided the right uh, funding and benefits working to construct this because that mm -hmm. was taken out and also to maybe provide some new housing across the other parts of the Commonwealth for the veterans because as we know it's still tough out there for a lot of veterans. A um, couple other things we've passed in the budget, the fiscal year budget highlights. We've passed um, a 97.3 million dollar funding for a variety of veteran services and programs overseen by the Department of Veteran Services. Two million additional f funding for veterans for mental and behavioral health support through Mass General's home-based program. 600,000 for women veterans, and we know more women have been entering the military and they need just as much help as everyone else, if not more. Mm -hmm. And 200,000 for independent and impartial ombudsman at the Holy Oak Soldiers Home, which I mentioned. Uh, we also did a supplemental budget this past year for 13 million for National Guard activations, including pandemic-related work, because the National Guard had been called into help out at the right. last minute on many occasions. Mm -hmm. With F the MS success. Yes, yes, and uh, also cyber security, which is a big thing. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that I'm like an old man with technology sometimes. I'm lucky I know how to use a cell phone. But I'll tell you, cyber security is real. It's happening, and it's not just from Russia. It's happening. You can get a young 14-year-old child mm -hmm. that knows how to hack a system. Mm -hmm. Our local police department, I think, a couple months ago was hacked. So we're, oh, we've, well. we've got two things. We've put some money in the budget to do four sections of the Commonwealth for cybersecurity. One that's in the southeast section is going to be at Bridgewater State University, but they're able to work with other colleges as well to mm -hmm. help protect our, our security. And then also beyond that, and there's going to be one on the West Bar State, one in the South Shore, one at Boston area, but also to do with the using the National Guard to help with cybersecurity. And no cost to the taxpayers additional that we already pay for veteran services. So we've met, I've worked with uh, Senator Walter Timothy on this. We've met at different parts of the South Shore mm -hmm. and gone to visit and got the word out to local veterans agents and services that this is available through the Nash Guard. So this has been wonderful. So that's, that's great news. But um, I know I, I want to, in the APA money has helped out too with a lot of things in uh, helping veterans get their license and registration done in a more expeditious manner because I mean, it isn't as bad as when I was younger when you first got your license, the lines were out the door, but we've seen mistakes happen at the registry that people have to retake their exams and everything, and you want to make sure there's proper oversight with that. So, uh, Now, I know there's things going on this weekend, so do you want to enlighten us with, I know we have the Memorial Parade, but you can let us know anything else. We do. We have the Memorial Day Parade, which lineup is 9.30 and kick off at 10 a.m. from the War Memorial Building on West Elm Street. Um, Prior to that, at 7.20 a.m., we lay the reset Melrose Cemetery mm -hmm. at the VFW Stone and then the Veterans Circle, and then on to Legion Parkway to the All Wars um, Monument there, mm -hmm. and then to Center Street to the Korean Monument, and then to and then the parade after that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over back at the VFW, we will lay a wreath there, and there'll be a coalition there for food and refreshments there. Well, I, I don't miss too many meals, but I appreciate the food <laughs> afterwards. And I think some of the local clubs usually have breakfast. I know the Batosi Club in Brockton. The Batosi Club, I heard, was going to, in between, lay in the wreaths and, right. and, and uh, the parade. <laughs> right, exactly. And we, we appreciate all the volunteers out there helping out. I mean, obviously, some of our vets and service agents, because mm -hmm. they're hired to do this, they get paid, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of behind-the-scenes people that volunteer day in and day out. I just, and, and I just want to say one thing. I came around the corner on North Quincy Street and saw my dad on the American Heroes banner. Uh, oh, and it hit my heart. <laughs> they yeah. have the wrong war, but <laughs> just to see him up there. As long there, as they spelt right. the name right. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> but, uh, so. yeah, the, it's a great honor to see those things on the banners. And right. I, and I'm glad Brockton is doing it. I know some other towns have done it, and it's one of those that have served. And my father served in World War II. 
uh, mm -hmm. him and mother, mother chose to be buried down at Bourne, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the memorial cemetery down there. Uh, they loved the Cape. They used to go down there for, mm -hmm. my father was a member of the U.S. Power Squadron um, down in Austin. Never owned his own boat, but like myself, had friends with boats, so that's even better. It's less mm -hmm. expensive that way. <laughs> but um, they love the Cape, so they're buried down at Otis Air Force Base in mm -hmm. um, the military mm -hmm. cemetery. And uh, like you mentioned, we have many veterans here. I know up at Melrose, they have the old stones going back to, I think, the Civil War era and maybe World War I and II. Some Spanish War yeah, in there as amazing. well. Yeah, amazing. Yes. And I'm glad to, to see that, you know, we got to take care of these cemeteries because um, I'd like to get a cleaning crew going to yeah. clean the veteran stones. We did it a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and they're starting to get dirty again. So can connect with me somehow. We'll try to set that up and hopefully before Veterans Day get them all nice and clean. Yeah, that, that's, that's real important because, yes. um, you know, we, we've got all those people and, and sometimes mm -hmm. they're not taking them. I know mm -hmm. down at Bourne they don't let you put stones. They, they have a plaque, but they keep, right. they keep that up to speed. And, right. and again, you can plant flowers for the weekend like around Memorial Day or Veterans Day. They don't let you leave stuff there all the time. But, but that's right. good because you don't want them being you know, a bunch it's of stuff. supposed to be the same rules, but people kind of. Right, <laughs> right. And everybody's got different beliefs, and we have freedom right. of religion in this country that right. that's important. Right. But right. you got to keep these these grave sites clean and up to par and mm -hmm. so forth. So. Mm -hmm. And on Monday we'll be doing the uh, poppy sale, oh, probably yeah. around uh, two o'clock. The buddy poppy drive at around two o'clock down at Doyle's down. Cary Hill parking lot. Okay, the the, uh, the sidelines Doyle. Right? Sidelines yeah. Doyle's yeah. down Cary yeah. Hill. We, we had yeah. three of them that Tommy Doyle had. Right. I think he got burnt out. He had mm -hmm. one in East and the, the original one he bought, which mm -hmm. is the old pizza pub that he moved mm -hmm. to, to Oak Street, which the Bickfords was. Right. And then the, the other sidelines, it's, I, I know Mike Dadak and his partner run that now. And uh, mm -hmm. they have a lot of great um, mm -hmm. events there. So I'm glad that they're utilizing that. Mm -hmm. um, I know Tommy, after he sold some of his businesses, he had a slight stroke but he's doing much better now i saw him at a at another service for a friend that passed and oh, he wow. looks good so wow but he's been great uh -huh. <coughs> and the other owners of these other facilities have been great to and we, we we were also um recipients <coughs> of the upper fund money so we we're excited about that to get new chairs and tables for the post. yeah that, i'll tell you that mm -hmm. that money in, in plymouth county our delegation helped out too because when covid first hit and we were able to get the money from the federal government the governor didn't want the counties to get the money. And obviously we know county government is much larger in Texas and other states than it is here, but it's still a very alive, active, and they were able to get the money distributed to the cities and towns in Plymouth mm -hmm. County a lot faster mm -hmm. than if it would have went through the administration. So mm -hmm. thank God that they were there. And this additional APA money that's coming is so important. And we still got to utilize that because there's still a lot of needs out there. So Right. Right. Well, we're about to finish up. I just want to thank you both for coming here. Um, and is there any numbers that they should call if they need to reach you at, at the VFW or Veteran Service? Our biggest, we did mention our Facebook. We're the Brockton VFW 1046 Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a shortcut to that if you use the uh, website browser. is uh, BrocktonVFWAUX.org. AUX mm -hmm. short for auxiliary. Mm -hmm. BrocktonVFWAUX.org. Mm -hmm. Get you right to our Facebook page. You can follow us with all of our stuff and you can private message us from there. Right. Um, whatever anyone wants to help us with. If they're on the wheel of eligibility, having a, a parent, grandparent, uh, sibling, a, a spouse, child or grandchild who served, mm -hmm. uh, we'd be happy to have them as a member. We're about 50 strong, but there are a lot of veterans in this community that can need our help. So mm -hmm. we need help uh, to help them. Absolutely. Right. And right. Uh, my number, if anyone needs to reach me, is 617 Seven two two one two zero zero six one seven seven two two one two zero zero. And my email address at the state house is Michael dot Brady at M A for Massachusetts Senate dot org. No spaces. So I'm sorry dot gov. So it's mm. Michael dot Brady at M A Senate dot gov. Um, in any help we can be, I, I'm very fortunate. I have a great staff and uh, chief of staff Al Dijerolo, who's from Brockton and and. Donna, who worked in the State House, and some other new employees. So of any service that we can be, please don't hesitate to contact us. I know that a lot of unemployment issues, people got hit with this past couple of years because of COVID, and some got charged with receiving unemployment that they may not have received, so we had to get that straightened out with their taxes, or they, they needed to pay, uh, you know, income tax on that. Mm -hmm. And we did also, in the legislation we passed in the Senate for tuition fees that might have been waived for the students, which college costs are going through the roof, we put it in the Senate budget. It's going to the conference committee to be decided between the House and the Senate to waive the taxes on, on 
tuition fees that might have been waived because they still get hit with the taxes. We also are looking to help save families with their tax bills. Of course, there was a gas tax uh, amendment proposed that I supported in, in the legislation this week to waive the gas tax and to help out with um, taxes. It, it didn't go through, but they did say that they are going to work on something else to kind of ease people on the taxes. The good news is revenue is up, but we want to help the families that are suffering out there as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. I want to wish everyone a happy and safe Memorial Day, and thank you to you both for coming on today. And I'm your Senator Michael Brady, and please, anytime you need to contact us, don't hesitate. And I'm going to show this VFW Auxiliary Eligibility Wheel one last time if anybody needs to contact on the VFW Auxiliary Wheel. So mm -hmm. thank you again, and thank you both for coming today. We appreciate your time. And I know your schedules are yeah. very busy, but thank you for having us. And we look forward uh, to marching some parades this weekend. So yes, we'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for all you do. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.